Hello everyone, it's Nikki Backerl D'Angelo here again for State of the Game, a Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous podcast, and uh, podcast, video cast, whatever it might be, I might take this and stick it up on my uh, Star Citizen Informer channel, since myself and Dr. Hawk have found absolutely no time to get together and do that. And I think that's going to be a little bit harder over time because I start school in just three short weeks. Well... Chris was gone for, I think it was 60 or 70 days, and he's come back, and a wealth of information is beginning to come out of CIG once more. And it's a lot of information that's dropped in little snippets and little tidbits throughout the different shows that are done by CIG, from 10 for the chairman, 10 for the producers, 10 for the designers, my own show with Ben's Day, and Around the Verse, and Reverse the Verse. So a lot of cool things going on in the Star Citizen world, but we still have the same exact assets that are available to us by and large. But they released version 1.1.5 this week and started to give us a little peek into the things that they were doing behind the scenes. Well, there's a lot of good, there's some bad, and none of it should actually be taken with anything but a grain of salt at this point, because things that they dump to the PTU are kind of like uh, throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing what sticks. Because there are things that might be broken, there are things that might not work as they intended, and when they get out there and are inside of the game engine, they don't make any sense at all. Um, you'll see a couple of bugs that I've found in the game uh, specifically, like always, whenever there's a major patch that changes physics or anything that has to do with the game engine, the buggy stops working as intended. Um, other things like trying to get in and out of your constellation I found, not being able to stand on the elevator, the physics does not put you on the elevator, it just, you know, it just goes up and down without you on it. So there's a lot of little tiny pieces like that that are broken, and to me it's like big deal. It's a PTU patch. They'll patch it, and it will work, and by the time it goes live, everybody will have a, uh, everybody will have a working and good version of the game. So what do I see behind the scenes? Well, they're starting to look at the fidelity of the game, and right now it's unmatched by any space sim ever. Every ship, every piece of the game seems to be beautiful and seems to be the most gorgeous thing that we've ever seen in a space combat simulator. But there's something that just seems to be missing from the game itself to me. And you'll see that in just a few moments when we start looking at the combat pieces. And that's the feeling that Wing Commander gave you. The feeling of being an amazing, um, amazing fighter pilot that could just take down the enemy at any point. You don't get that feeling in this game, and that's something that's going to be different. So what are the major things that I see that are happening? I'm going to touch on some of these inside of this week's uh, Star Citizen AA, but there are quite a number of things that are starting to change, and one of the things is uh, starting to look at components. The component system, which are the pieces that make up your ship that either power it, cool it, give weapons to it, give uh, CPU usage. And they're starting to look at components not being one, but being multiples. And what do I mean by that? For, well, every ship up until the Retaliator, you would see one specific system. You'd see one power plant, you'd see one shield unit, you'd see one CPU unit. Um, and then maybe you'd have a couple of thrusters, and then you'd have maneuvering jets. Well, they were talking about this recently, and they're going to be looking at ships as small as the Hornet, as having multiple units. It helps them out in the game design, or in the engine design, immensely. But to me, it, it makes me question, do you really need to do this to put two power plants inside of something like a Hornet? And then I think about the redundancies, and I think about how it would actually be helpful to me, and I step back. So good things coming from confusing statements that they make. All right, we set down, and again, another bug we find, and that's the 
slanted, leaning to the left bug that we saw in some other ships while they were landing out here earlier in the uh, game. Well, how impressed am I? Well, let's stop here and let's move on to the Vandal Swarm piece, and I'll explain that in full. This, by the way, is just footage that I'll be using for Star Citizen AA, so if you're watching this and not listening to it, don't fret. You will be able to see this in its entirety and what I was actually doing here if you watch Star Citizen AA later today or tomorrow. So as we move the video, but not the conversation, into Vandal Swarm, I'm going to use this just to give you an idea of flight model and flight dynamics and talk a little bit about what impresses me most about this game right now. And its most impressive pieces are how you actually fly, how you actually are using the real physics engine. And the guys over at CryEngine that were picked up and moved into Foundry 42's Frankfurt office are doing an amazing job making this area even more fun to play in is going to be one of the biggest things that they could do for us while we're waiting for the full game to come out and let me tell you the flight dynamics the little changes that they're making although there are some bugs and there are some um, things that need to change like right now boost disappears rather quickly on all the ships i'm sure that is something that they didn't intend um, this is the Merlin. It does not have the ability to replenish boost if you use it, which to me doesn't seem very... Uh, I, mean, I mean, it doesn't seem very realistic. All the ships should have that. I can understand not being able to refuel the fuel that powers your main thruster, but not being able to refuel the fuel that powers your boost engines is kind of uh, kind of a bit troubling to me because it means that this ship is not going to be a very good at the things that they said it was going to be good at which is racing and being a point defense fighter I think it's going to be uh, something that they're going to have to revisit but let's take a step back and look at the new scythe model because I don't have a scythe the scythe itself here is probably the same frame the same working scythe that we've been firing at for years but well, for years, yeah, two years now. But it also has the new damage model. Now, I'm not sure if it's on this or the new damage model is on the one that we get to fly. But let me tell you, the AI and the models in this version of the game, the frame rate, seem better than they've ever been before. They're making huge strides in bringing us a better and better and better game. I haven't seen crystal clear smooth gameplay like this in a while in the game for a while I lost like about 10 15 20 frames a second and I got it all back with this patch so whatever they're doing they're doing wonderfully so when we step away from this piece because you know to give you a review of something that's not done not out not fully not fully finished polished and delivered to us as an alpha uh, it would be very unfair. So let's move on to Chris coming back to CIG. So Chris comes back to CIG immediately. They have Comic Con. And then he sits down with Ben and does an hour and a half long Ben for the chairman. Ten for the chairman. And it really was a big plug to try to calm the nerves of the people who are starting to fly off the deep end because of uh, events like the Derek Smart, which I talked about last week. Unfortunately, most of you didn't get my sarcasm when I was saying thank you, Derek. Um, I personally um, don't thank him, but I do thank uh, Chris and Ben for sitting down. However, corporate and um, PR propaganda-ish the video was, it did bring us a lot of information. You know, I'm um, the CIG fangirl. I love talking to the people there. I love having these uh, little videos with them. And, you know, this is my game. You know, this is the game I've been waiting for. This is the game I can't wait to play. But still, finding out things like where the money's going, why, why are they doing certain things, it, it puts things to rest. It makes you feel better. And one of those things is the way that they captured the performances for the game they did it more like a a movie more like something that you would see in a theater 
like Planet of the Apes and uh, Avatar. They did full motion capture, um, performance capture, where they take the person, the facial expressions, everything, and put it into the game engine, as opposed to um, taking the motion, taking the actions that people do, and then attaching them to in-game engine uh, bodies. I mean, there is a big difference between that, right? It's a difference between the animators trying to move the mouth and move the, uh, the facial expressions and uh, the actual facial expressions and mouth movements and, you know, little idiosynchronies that each person has that are being captured by all the cameras that they have and then layered on top of um, and people in the game, you know, like uh, the framework of people. That is pretty impressive and it costs a boatload of money but it makes for a better game. Now I'll tell you this, Wing Commander, the whole series, the acting in them, even though they had people like Mark Hamill and um, quite a number of other people, um, it, it, sometimes the dialogue and everything is a bit cheesy but that's what I expect. I expect this game to be like a C movie but I don't know if other people are expecting that. I mean, that's what I'm expecting and that's what I want to see. I want to be that character, that cheesy, righteous, let me go and kill all the bad guys because they're so bad and they're going to ruin our way of life. That's what I want to be. But I think they're going to go a little bit dark on this game, a little bit more amoral, a little bit more non-righteous, a little bit less A, um, C, and try to actually hit on an A or a B movie. And I'm I'm impressed by that, and I'm excited by that, but I don't know if it's going to give me that same feeling that I had. You can see me here playing with this scythe, and I'm trying to shoot it for, well, for minutes on end and can't hit it, and I'm thinking that the flight model has changed and the AI has changed so well that each one of your dogfights becomes more like a soccer game in FIFA than like a high-scoring uh, Americanized sport like uh, football or uh, hockey these days. And I don't feel like I'm that all-star pilot when I'm getting into this ship and firing on, a, uh, firing on an opponent. I'm going to have to take out my other ships once we get another patch to clean up some of the broken pieces of this to see if that happens. So there's a lot in this week's State of the Game. It really is just talking about the things that Chris has brought back from Europe with him and now that we have first person shooter module, the Arena Commander 2.0 and the social module on the way, I'm quite impressed with where we are and I'm hoping that the direction that we move in in the future is going to be, um, going to be a much better one. All right, folks, this is Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo signing off with her thoughts for um, the week of the 20, um, 20th of July, the uh, anniversary of the first moon landing by Apollo 11, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. Um, of course, Michael Collins didn't land. He just orbited the moon quite a number of times. But for this week, that's all I have. I'm hoping that as this patch gets... Uh, corrected and updated and then put out to the live server. I have a lot more to talk about. Stay tuned this week for another Ben's Day. Get your questions in to starcitizenaa at gmail.com with Ben's Day in the subject field. And there will be a Star Citizen AA where I give you my feeling on the Merlin and a couple of other things and talk in depth about some of the changes that I pointed out here. But until then, you all be safe out there and I'll talk to you soon.